Hello, welcome to the session on the transmission control protocol. This is going to be a short video to just give an overview of TCP. It's not going into the details of TCP because that will take hours to complete. So one thing you have to understand that TCP protocol is the most complex protocol and I will tell you where the complexity come from, comes from and then let us understand just a, an overview of this. So as I, I spoke about socket, the same socket programming is done here either for UDP or TCP sockets are created. So let me say a socket is I told you that there are four tuple right the four tuple values are source port ID, destination port ID source IP address and destination IP address. So, for any connection either it is TCP or UDP these four values on the internet need to be unique. The reason is whatever data is getting created either from this end or this end need to be delivered to a particular process. An individual process can create one socket and it will wait on this. Now when it is waiting, suppose if this is transmitting something, it is going to say my source port ID is so and so port ID, my source IP address is so and so that because this is running on a machine. And what is the counterpart of my connection, the other end of the connection. So always remember the TCP and UDP are end to end protocol. Why do we call end to end? Because they talk to the final host which is establishing the connection. So they need to be identified and they are not identified based on whether it is a Windows machine or Solaris machine or whatever. It is based on the IP address of the machine that it is connected to. Now every connection is unique and always remember that a socket which is established connection is established is a two way communication that means it can be used for sending here and then receiving this thing. So only difference between uh, UDP and TCP is that this there is no fixed connection established for UDP side. Okay. Uh, what I mean by fixed connection means do not assume that it is going to be that this host when it is communicating with another host on some other continent through one socket and I say that it is connection oriented that means there is a connection between these two. Do not expect that there is a physical connection is being established there and all the routers on the way are fixed already where there the path is going to be it is not so. Because TCP is at L4, it is running on a layer which is IP layer which is L3 and I many times I told you that L3 IP layer is best effort and there is no fixed path, path taken for any IP packet going from one end to the other end. So you cannot establish a fixed connection, a physical connection passing through every router that you have already decided for uh, for two computers to communicate over the internet. So, L4 is connection oriented. Yes, I agree. It means that the packets which are generated from L4, okay. See, there are many layers, right. L4 is one layer, L3 is a below layer. Now, as far as I am concerned at the L4 layer, if I am pumping some packets, okay, always L4 level, we will call it a segment. Okay, segments are being pumped from L4 and then packets get generated from L3, frames they become frames in L2. So the same data which is sitting inside the packet and it may not be same, it may be chopped off and then a small part of that may be sitting in the uh, IP packet and some part of that L may be will be sitting in the frame because again there may be a segmentation and reassembly could happen at the IP level. So, 
whatever you have a segment or uh, becomes a packet at the L3 level and it becomes a frame at L2 level and they finally travel over the internet on different paths finally the routers will manage to deliver it on the other end now when i say manage to deliver it is not guaranteed to be delivered so imagine i send a segment from l4 level which has become multiple uh, when i am at l4 level itself i am dividing it because the reason is i am getting it from the application suppose uh, email is being generated with an attachment which is of gigabyte of or uh, maybe at least some hundreds of uh, megabyte of uh, a file then it needs to be chopped off so it will be chopped at the l4 level also so so it is going to send it in pieces it's a byte stream okay it could be a video or audio uh, uh, a file or it could be a continuous stream it, it can be anything or a web page which is streaming something so whatever order i am sending l4 is sending it may not be delivered at the same order at the other end the reason being it may be taking different path on the l l2 l3 level right ip level so it may get delayed some packet may get dropped so it may be you know uh, at l3 level you cannot do anything if it get dropped so l4 needs to take care that if some segment which i sent to l3 is not reached on the other end it has to be resent so what is happening that is what we are going to talk about l4 is sending a a data which has come from the application it may be splitting into some small segments and they are ordering it and sending it across the network and it has to talk to the l4 the counterpart on the other end to make sure that they have received it the other end has received in the same order when i say the same order it is delivered to l4 or application by waiting for the data to arrive okay see remember at the l4 level it is not guaranteed that they will reach re receive the data in the same order if something may be missing or something may be delayed because l3 is not guaranteed to deliver it at the same time so l4 is going to take care of some state information that means i sent this much of data over l3 and did i receive all of them or not if i don't receive i need to wait till it is received that means it is to talk to the l4 on the other end protocol on the other end say that i did not receive this particular packet that you sent me this data is missing i am waiting for it to come because before i deliver it to application i should have everything that the other end of the application sent to the l4 so if it doesn't come because l3 is unreliable it will wait so the state information is maintained so that it will wait for all the data to arrive and then inform the application that yes i got it so when the application on the sender side sends some data in which order it is sent it is sent as a byte stream over the network and l4 on the other side which is receiving the data waits till all the byte stream have been received and give it to the upper layer the application layer in the same order it has been sent that's why it is called reliable because any data sent from the sender not even single byte is missed on the transit if it is missed because of some error in the ethernet level l2 level or it is because of some tight ttl uh, you know so timing of and some ip packet is dropped somewhere in the intermediate router still l4 will wait for it okay that is how the reliability is maintained by the tcp this is what you have to understand when we say that tcp is providing a reliable connection oriented interface between two endpoints using unreliable best effort ip layer below it that's all okay this if you understand tcp is well understood okay let me now come here the, this is what i have said that application process is going to send a stream of bytes okay if it is a video stream it is going to be ordered right so the same thing should be delivered here on the other end okay or if it is a file whatever you are sending a file packet any data will not be missed out anywhere and it will be received without any error so there are some checksum at different levels okay to make sure that not even a single bit of information which has been sent by the sender is corrupted while the receiver is receiving it so how is it managing it so i told you that it will wait tcp l4 level will wait for some data which is missing that means what it should have a buffer and that buffer is managed by 
sliding window protocol which is a complex protocol which is not part of the syllabus where which will be taught in the advanced networking course wherein each of the bit, bytes or packets which are coming in are packed put in the buffer till everything is received once the entire thing which has been sent by them is received i am not saying that it will wait for the entire data to be received the so suppose at time t0 to t1 some data was sent by the sender again it, there is no exact same time because the transit time is there but the order is there right so if suppose uh, this is the order the data has come okay okay maybe i should say t0 is here and t1 is here because it is coming like this this data goes out first so this is the order suppose you assume that d0 to d4 then it is coming in this order so d0 to d4 should come then it will deliver it so that much of packet is sent now another set of data is coming so it is based on the amount of buffer that you have it on both the sender and receiver so it is wait for everything that has been come now nothing should be missing in between then it is delivered to the other end so that way it's not waiting forever that you receive everything then only i will inform the application process no as and when you get the complete data send it up to the application process based on the buffer size that you maintain because you cannot maintain a buffer size of a huge attachment which is coming from the other end so it is like a uh, waiting for one particular data of you know whatever has been sent i received it so far imagine that you are sending the pages of your book to somebody it is not that 1000 pages of the books are being sent you will wait for all the 1000 pages to receive at the other end you will wait for maybe 10 or 20 or maybe 100 pages to be received in the order all the pages are received i will inform it then i will wait for 100 to 200 okay so this way the packets are being received so this much you need to have idea of what is the tcp's uh, reliability is all about it could be a file or a video or whatever okay so um in, uh, in contrast to EDP, this is a reliable connection oriented byte stream service. Always remember from the application perspective, TCP is providing a service which is guaranteed to be delivered in whatever order you are sending. I am going to deliver it to the other end without any interrupt, any, any corruption, without even missing your own particular byte of data that you have given me. So that is a service that TCP is providing to the application and in order delivery. Remember, it is in order delivery from the TCP to application but it is not the case from l3 to l4 ip is not giving you in the same order it may be giving out of order that's why i said that there is a buffer required for whatever is coming i will put it there okay if something is missing i will wait for that to come maybe it is delayed on the way if it doesn't come i will send the acknowledgement back saying that i did not get it negative acknowledgement if i get all the data i will say positive acknowledgement will be sent that is why both the side of devices have a state information of how much data has been received properly acknowledgement is sent so that's why the reliability is you know assured because the sender is not just sending it and forgetting it it's going to wait or hold the information till it gets a confirmation from the other end that it has received all the data it has been sent then it will flush the buffer and you know send the next set of data from the application so it is actually driven by the send uh, receivers capability to consume the data and second one is about the network how fast the network is suppose if a particular day of uh, in the day of uh, uh, time of the day if the net network is congested then what will happen is the all the packets are going to be slowed down so based on that the sender is going to be notified that there is a congestion in the network so slow down your sending so that's congestion information is sent to the L4 level and L4 is going to inform the uh, applications that no, I am not able to give you the speed at which you are asking me to send it because the other side is not receiving or maybe the network is down or slow. In that case, what will happen? Application will adapt it to the situation. That's why we see when you see some video and because the connection is bad, suppose you are uh, a network service provider is not giving you the proper thing because of maybe rain somewhere or your uh, uh, cables are maybe uh, uh, limited or uh, some cables are down some networks are down routers are down then what happens is the, the the quality of video that you get is dropped automatically okay you get a hazy video still it will be sending you but the uh, quality of the video will be reduced so the number of dots per second dpi or whatever you say that will be reduced so that you can still get the 
live stream suppose it is coming you get what is happening but you will not get the same quality that would have come when the network was better okay so these are the things which are called flow control okay flow control means how the data is flowing into the network whether can you control the speed of the flow based on the consumption whether you are able to consume or are you able to send it Net network is able to handle that uh, rate at which you want to send if it is not happening it will be controlling the center will be controlling the flow so that reliability is still assured in order delivery is still assured and connection oriented is supported okay so these are the major uh, take away from the tcp perspective okay now socket programming i mentioned that you know we have a port id identified so that multiple applications can be running simultaneously you may be playing multiple youtube videos or multiple websites you are opening all maybe emails you are sending from multiple Google, gmail account everything will be happening on the same tcp connection that you have but what i am saying that it is not going through the same socket what i meant what i meant by the same network infrastructure that you have but l4 handles every connection as a individual sockets so the four tuple will be individual and the difference between each of those connections will be the source port id because each application process which is creating a tcp connection with the other end will have an individual unique port id which will be enough for you to identify which socket the data is you know destined for so in when the replay comes back you will be able to deliver it to the uh, particular application so congestion control i've already explained to you throttle the flow of data and connection is already. now how will you make sure that the reliability is assured that means initially you have to first of all establish a connection before you even start sending anything it's like a telephone call you know you cannot start talking unless the connection is established and the other end person has received your call right accepted your call so similar to telephone this tcp connection waits for the other end to really accept your connection there may be possibility that the other end is already connected to many uh, service so suppose if you are trying to book irctc uh, uh, you know train uh, booking sometimes during the peak hour where there is some window open for rac to be uh, or uh, emergency quota to be filled then you see that lot of people are accessing the irctc and irct server which is having some limit on number of connections that it can support at the same time so when it is not possible to support the connections what you get is you are not able to connect to the irct server so that is the phase of connection establishment you cannot start interacting with the irctc or looking at the tele you know a train availability or start booking unless the tcp connection is established so that's why connection establishment is to assure that there is a process on the other end receiving data for you or giving the data what you are asking for so in case of irctc when you are booking there is already a connection established then there is one process running on the irct server only specifically for your uh, connection so when you are looking for a particular train and when you are trying that i want to book a particular uh, uh, class and then these are all the interactions which is happening on two way communication right so there is a process always listening to your inputs coming from you and imagine this is not happening instantaneously there will be a delay from your end from the user interaction perspective and then there is a network delay so all that is taken care of in terms of timing on both ends so there is a state information maintained and there is a clock running on both sides how much time should i wait for somebody to respond suppose you started interacting and then you decided that okay i am not interested in any more uh, or no uh, maybe booking a ticket then what happens the other side times out and the process kills the connection okay the connection could be terminated by any one of the processes on both end it could be that it is not able to you know uh, accept your connection then also it will be rejected but after establishing the connection if no, no activity is happening or some timeout happens both side can timeout okay so these are all the complex complexity involved in in no uh, transacting over tcp all that you are doing because you want a reliability so that's why udp is a shortcut way of communication and tcp is more authentic you know reliable communication but you have to spend time in establishing the connection and then start sending the data over it so um, when the ip packet is are not delivered in the order it will be taken care of at the l4 level the packets may be reordered 
or it may be duplex pack, du, 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 duplicate packet may be delivered because the acknowledgement has to go from here to the other end. But the sender may time out saying that maybe a water is sent has not been received. So sometimes when you are talking, you may not hear the you know, acknowledgement from the other end, then you may start repeating the same thing, right? Uh, thinking that the other person has not heard. But the problem could be that what the person said, uh, responded, it may, not, may not reached you. So whatever you are sending is a duplicate information. Similarly, network also does. So you can imagine the TCP connection is similar to what the telephone conversation you have. Okay. So this is what is the uh, uh, crux of TCP and uh, effectively the TCP header needs to take care of all these things to be supported. So there is a, a window. This is the buffer information that sender is saying that I am able to you know, keep this much of data on my end before I deliver it to application. So this is a kind of a, 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 a field which is used for flow control. Okay, I can also, if the cons you know, application is not able to consume the data, uh, then I may send the sender to slow down. So this application window will be monitored or maybe modified to inform the other end that this is what I want you to uh, keep in mind. So acknowledgement uh, uh, or when you are sending data, send only this much at a time. I will receive it, acknowledge back to you, then send me similar window of data. Window means how many bytes of data you are uh, uh, ready to accept. So acknowledgement, when you are sending actual data, okay, it is not that acknowledgement is going as a separate uh, segment. It is sent along with your data also. So acknowledgement is one field there, which is saying that other end, I received so, so much I received so far. So you can uh, remove it from your end because I have received it everything safely. Then the, send, the sender will remove it from their buffer and ask for the application to give some more data. So this is like a live uh, communication happening between the two ends. Okay, that's why I say the TCP is between the end to end protocol because whatever communication happening is between the two hosts. The intermediate routers do not really concern about what is inside this uh, TCP header. Okay, checksum is there. Okay, every level IP is having checksum. You know, you have seen that. TCP has a checksum and you know that even the Ethernet has a, um, a checksum uh, similar to uh, error correction is there on the other error at the Ethernet level also. So every level there is a uh, validity done to make sure that data is received or uh, delivered uh, you know, reliably. And there are some optional fields similar to IP where you can have some more uh, information about what you want to do in this connection. Okay, So uh, we are not going into the details of that but understand this particular header field and you may be able to at least say a few words about each of them. Okay? You know about source port ID and destination port ID, why they are there and you may not see the IP here because remember IP is a down. So socket wants the IP also, right? So destination and source port IP ID, IP addresses and then this too, okay? which is part of the uh, TCP header. Okay? So I hope this has given you a good overview of uh, what is a a TCP header and siding window protocol will be covered later on which is making sure that flow control is also taken care then a reliable uh, uh, receiving of data is uh, assured. Now what are the difference between these two very easy there is no sequencing business in UDP whereas it is uh, all the sequence are sequenced before delivering to the application. When I say sequencing it is the guarantee that TCP is telling giving to the application always remember it is a service provided to the application. Um, segment and retransmission is happening here there is nothing like that you send it and forget it it's similar to IP at the UDP level okay uh, it is connectionless similar to uh, best effort and this is connection oriented though physical connection is not established there is a uh, virtual connection making sure that all the data delivered on one end is received at the other end and reliable and reliable you know that and there is always acknowledgement for every segment of data not individually it can be a group of segments also but there is a guarantee that sender will know that the receiver has received so far whatever I have sent is being received correctly. Okay, So that is uh, coming, that is uh, bringing to the end of this uh, session on TCP. Bye-bye. See you in the next opportunity. Bye-bye.